Good morning. I'm Doug DeGraffenried, the Senior Minister of Trinity United Methodist Church. We're grateful you have invited us into your space for this service of worship. We hope your experience of this time will be life-giving and encouraging. Today is the next to the last Sunday of the Christian liturgical year. The scripture lesson for today is a reading from Luke about the fall of Jerusalem and the end of time. The subject matter can be confusing for some and disconcerting to others. Jesus does not speak easy nor comfortable words in this text. He does offer us guidance for those times when we feel like life is in the proverbial handbasket addressed to hell. How do you live in those times? Better yet, how do you live through those times? This morning, let's hear the words of Jesus as he addresses tough times. I think it's driving us both a little crazy, okay? So you need to know that your, your, your ministerial staff has a little bit of ADHD when it comes to things like moving the pulpit. I will receive the confession for whoever moved it after the service today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we begin to look into your word, we ask you to open our hearts and our minds to the message you are speaking to us today. Let us see your words in a new light, and may our heart's desire be to follow in obedience. Above all, let us see you more clearly and respond with the worship you so greatly deserve. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for meeting us in this place. Amen. For the hymn of praise, would you stand?
quickly as they come to be seated, and we appreciate you supporting them in this ministry. All right, stand with me as we affirm what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This morning, uh, Aaron and Kate Cox are bringing Turner Ashby to the altar for the sacrament of baptism. And there is a response for you in the bulletin, so you be ready. Y'all come on up. Okay, we're going to find out if he's going to be good or not. Friends, baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, through which grace we become partakers of his righteousness and heirs of life eternal. Those receiving this sacrament are thereby marked as Christian disciples and initiated into the fellowship of Christ's holy church. Our Lord has expressly given to little children a place among the people of God, which holy privilege must not be denied them. We remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, Let the little children come unto me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. I ask you now in presenting your son for holy baptism, do you confess your faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Do you therefore accept as your bounden duty and privilege to live before this child a life that becomes the gospel, to exercise all godly care that he be brought up in the Christian faith, that he be taught the Holy Scriptures, and that he learn to give reverent attendance upon the private and public worship of God? Do you therefore accept as your bounden duty and privilege to live before this child a life that becomes the gospel, and keep him in the church until one day he shall, by the power of God, accept for himself the gift of salvation. Okay, it's time for the big handoff. You want to come see me? You want to come see me? Hello, how are you? Why? She's right there. I see. You see, way better. What name is given this child? Turner Ashby Cox, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, that's all the water you're getting now. Hi. How are you? You all right? Can we have a moment together? The newest member of the family of God, live before him a life that becomes the gospel, so that one day he will stand in the church and accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Amen. There's a response there printed for the bulletin. Let me get the right introduction. Brothers and sisters of the household of faith, I commend to your love and care, Turner Cox, whom we this day recognize as a member of the family of God. Will you endeavor so to live that he may grow in the knowledge and love of God through our Savior, Jesus Christ? With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ 
that Turner, surrounded by steadfast love, may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. Amen. Would you pray with me? Eternal God, we confess that our thoughts are far from you. We busy ourselves with coming and going, and we fail to recognize your presence. We look for signs and wonders, and we overlook miracles and answers to prayer. We've let our logic and our reasoning outweigh your peace that passes all understanding, and your love which covers a multitude of sins. Teach us to search the Scriptures with a heart turned toward the guiding of the Holy Spirit. Give us knowledge of your will and strength of your calling. In times of trouble, let us be calm. In times of distress, let us know your peace. In times of uncertainty, let us have assurance. Renew our hearts and our minds that we may know your voice when you call, that we may see your face when you are near, that we may carry your presence with us all the days of our lives. And let us not grow weary of doing good, but remind us to endure to the very end, running the race with perseverance and finding rest in your outstretched arms. Amen. Now, if you would pray with me the prayer our Lord taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. to this morning's offering, we're reminded that all good gifts come from above, and so it is only good and right to give our good gifts back to God. Father God, we ask that you would receive this offering, that you would bless it, and that you would teach us how to use it to further your kingdom. Amen.
please be seated. Our lesson this morning comes from the 21st chapter of Luke's gospel. Hear these words. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must first take place, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes in various places, famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. Before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify, so make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you the words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed, even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends. They will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. Friends, this is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. This morning, I crossed the bridge on 544, and it had frost on it. It was just an interesting image of looking, that bri looking at the bridge early in the morning with frost on it. And I thought, yeah, right, global warming, it's going to get us. Because in 1978, when I was in college, there were articles appearing that the scientists were concerned that we were all entering a second ice age, that the cooling of the last 40 years would be sustained and things would get colder and colder and eventually, eventually there would be great famines all over this country. Same scientists have swapped sides now, and it's not the ice age we have to worry about, it's global warming. Everybody's all in a tizzy about the Mississippi River drying up. I can remember being in New Orleans when we had something down there called saltwater intrusion. The Mississippi would get so low, the Gulf of Mexico would start flowing upstream, and they were worried that pretty soon we would be drinking salt water from the taps in New Orleans. There's always a scientist or always a pundit or always somebody around who will tell us that things are just falling apart. They are going to hell in the proverbial handbasket. I don't know where the image came from. It used to be going to hell in a handcart, but a handcart might require a couple of people, so we've got a handbasket for it. And I started thinking about this last spring as it was time to put the sermons together. And we had one of those office days that that particular phrase kept coming up in conversation. Whether it was the church or the climate or politics or culture, it was all, all in the proverbial handbasket heading to you know where. We just can't help ourselves, can we? It means that things are getting bad, and they're getting bad rapidly. They're getting bad quickly. And guys, I want to help you with this because I've discovered a parallel translation to this. It comes out of a female voice. Guys... If the significant female in your life says, it's fine, it's fine, and I'm fine, and the situation is fine, you know it's going to hell in a handbasket. 
That's the way the women say it. I'm fine. Paul talked about this time, the end of time, the end of days, when he warned the church of his time about the last days. He said, you must understand this, that in the last days, distressing times will come. There's the handbasket. For people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, inhumane, implacable, slanderers, profligates, brutes, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding the outward form of godliness but denying its power. Paul said, avoid them. Jesus said, you're going to hear stuff. You're going to hear of wars and insurrections. And I'm amused by how they heard of it. They would hear of it in the marketplace. They would hear of it in, in the synagogues. They would hear of it by their neighbors. They had no newspapers, telephone, YouTube, or anything like that. They just shared word of mouth. When you hear of wars and insurrections, don't be terrified. This must happen first. You're going to hear about nations rising against nation and kingdom against kingdom. You're going to hear of earthquakes in various places and famines and plagues. There are going to be dreadful portents and signs in the heavens. Somebody's loading up their handbasket. And there will be people who were suddenly called to proclaim the day of the Lord and the coming of Jesus. And there will be prophets who scare Christian people to death and worry them. Chicken Little and her little brood will just go crazy during these times, cackling that the end is coming, the end is coming, and you'd better get ready. This is what you're going to hear in theory. Jerry Springer, who is now in his mid-70s, I think is doing a farewell apology tour. He is apologizing for ruining culture, for bringing to the television what was hidden for so long for bringing some of those insidious things into people's living rooms to bring down a great culture. So you're going to hear of this. You're going to hear of horrible things going on, Jesus said. But hold on. That's just in theory. Then he said, then they'll arrest you. They'll persecute you. What was in theory, what was far, what was distant suddenly comes to your front door. And as a follower of Jesus Christ, people are going to snatch you up out of church or they're going to drag you out of your, your place of business. They're going to force you to either recant or be ruined. They are going to carry you before the synagogues or before governors. And they're going to make the accusation that you are leading a sedition because you believe in Jesus Christ. And that because you believe and because you proclaim, because you're not willing to say, yeah, it may be true, it may not be true, because you are willing to believe and proclaim boldly in Christ, prepare for this theory to be Come personal, and you'll be arrested. Then Jesus said something odd. This will give you an opportunity to testify, to witness. And here's the odd thing he said. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words. Jesus is saying to us that a testimony is not for the trained or the ordained. 
He is saying to us that do not push me out of any hard time you find yourself in. Do not make your speech up. Do not have it ready because at the moment you need it, I am going to give you wisdom and I am going to give you words and your opponents will not be able to withstand or contradict the words that I am going to give you. Do not push Jesus out of the process. Because your words of endurance, your words of how you've made it through these hard times, your words of withstanding the news of wars and insurrection, your words, your words are what the authorities are trying to stifle. Your words are what people want to still and silence. Your words that are inspired and spoken through the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, through you. John Wesley and his faith journey discovered that it was the words of others, it was the testimony of others, it was others sharing their faith that moved him along in his faith journey. It was the encouragement that Bowler gave him to preach faith until you have faith, and when you have faith, then you'll preach faith. They're, they're your words. Your words of witness, your words of testimony, your words of affirmation that Jesus Christ is journeying with you, that he's gotten you through the valley of the shadow, that he continues to walk with you, that even though there are wars and rumors of wars and insurrection, even though you have been arrested and persecuted, yet you will love him and you will serve him. These are your words and your story and your testimony is powerful and life-changing and transformative for so many. Next Sunday, Michael won't be here. Michael is going to Gibsland and Oak Grove to preach. And I'm appreciative of you who have gone to these three small churches and, and shared your testimony and shared a word and you've preached. And they're loving it. Some of them have said, you're the best preachers they've had in decades. You are good, but you're authentic because it's coming from you. It's coming from your heart. It's coming from your faith experience with Jesus Christ. It's coming from a place of sincerity. It's coming from a place of prayer because you pray and God gives you the words. Jesus said, you're going to hear bad things, then it's going to get personal, and I want you to be my witnesses when it gets personal. And oh, by the way, after you're my witnesses, it's going to get personal again. Jesus said, you'll be betrayed by your parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, they will put some of you to death. Those parents and brothers, those relatives and friends who should be supporting you, who should be praying for you, who should be caring for you, even as you are dealing with the realities of the end of time, those are the ones that are going to turn on you and betray you. Jesus died on the cross with only his mother and the apostle John present. He'd been betrayed and abandoned and left behind by his friends. Jesus told us that we ought to love our neighbor, love our neighbor as ourself and the question comes to Jesus, well, who is my neighbor? And Jesus says, your neighbor is the one that you act neighborly to. Why? Why should we love and care for and minister to our neighbors? Because one day, they might be the ones turning on us and betraying us and telling the authorities where we are. But Jesus said, <clears throat> listen, you're going to be hated because of my name, but not a hair on your head will perish. And by your endurance, 
you will gain your soul. There are a couple of places where Jesus talks like this. One is in the 10th chapter of Matthew's gospel where Jesus says, See, I'm sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and as innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. And when they hand you over, don't worry about how you are to speak or what you're to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and father his child, and children will rise up against their parents and have them put to death. You'll be hated because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And Jesus finished like he does in Luke. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, and yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs on your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. God knows you, and God is watching over you, and God is with you. But it's by our endurance that we gain our souls. It's by our perseverance that we're saved. So, Jesus talks about the end of time, and he talks about it in theory, and he says it's going to be personal, but you get a, a testimony, and it gets personal again, and then he talks at the end again in theory. And in theory, Jesus is saying, if you have endurance, if you walk through this with faith, if you walk through this looking up to him, you gain your souls. So what should we do? We should not worry whether the whole world will end tonight or next year or in a thousand years. Rather, we should pay attention to our own spiritual lives, to our own relationship with Jesus and with our neighbors. Philip Yancey tells the story of a trip he took to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, where he once had dinner in an Amish home. And during the meal, he heard about their unusual procedure for choosing a pastor. In that part of the country, Few Amish acquire an education beyond the eighth grade, and almost none of them have any theological training. The entire congregation votes for any man in the Amish world. Only men are allowed to apply. But they vote for any man who has shown pastoral potential. And the ones who receive at least three votes move forward before the congregation and they sit at a table. And at that table, each man who has received at least three votes has a hymn book in front of him. Hymn books are random. And the man opens the hymn book, and if he finds a card designating him as the new pastor, he is the new pastor of that congregation for the next year. How do you like that? Let's vote and get some hymnals. Let's see who's going to be next. Yancey says, what if a person selected doesn't feel qualified? And his Amish friend answered him with a puzzled look on his face. He replied, if he did feel qualified, we wouldn't want him. These young men weren't expecting a call, nor did they attempt to live in such a way to invite a call. 
They simply lived authentically as disciples of Christ, not worrying about calls or second comings. Jesus isn't looking for the qualified. He's looking for the available. He isn't looking for the fearful. He's looking for the fearless. He isn't looking for prognosticators or procrastinators. He's looking for steady practitioners of the faith. He isn't looking for warriors. He's looking for warriors. Some will argue that we should live each day as though it were our last. But the true disciple of Jesus Christ lives every day as though it were like any other day. They live faithfully, prayerfully, carefully, joyfully, and peacefully. If we do this, we will be ready when our world piles up into that final handbasket and Christ comes in glory. Would you stand and pray with me? We look around, O oh Lord, and so much seems wrong and out of place and out of balance. It appears as though we're headed in a wrong direction. But we know you are not surprised by the course of our history. You are not all caught off guard by the twists and the turns of our lives. And we pray, O oh God, that you would make us ever more mindful and aware of your loving presence that indeed we're all on a journey, a journey not in a handbasket, but a journey walking with the Lord and Savior who's carrying us to glory. Let that be our hope and our goal as we persevere and endure. Amen. Let's sing our closing hymn together. November 27th is the first Sunday of Advent, and Equinox is coming back on the 27th. Uh, Mickey is...
talked them into doing some Christmas music and other things for us. Uh, we'll have two services with Equinox. Both of them are at the, in the Trinity Center at 9 o'clock and then again at 11 o'clock. So remember that, 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock on the 27th in the Trinity Center, Equinox will be with us. And now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and abide with you always. Amen. You've been watching the morning worship service of the Trinity United Methodist Church in Ruston, Louisiana. I'm Doug DeGraffin Reed, the senior minister, and I want to thank you for spending time with us. Our hope is that in the songs, the prayers, and the message, you heard a word of encouragement for your life. Our media ministry is just one expression of our core value of reaching out to our world. We want to be available to you and with you in your journey through life. You can explore the Trinity community at trinityruston.org. If you have questions or would like to share information with us, you'll find a link on our website to contact us. Again, thank you for spending time with us.